Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this uh, Friday once again, August 11th, 2023. It is about 12.57 p.m. here uh, in California, and the latest quake looks like a 3.5 into the area of South America. Did see some movement uh, ramping up down there into the Columbia area earlier uh, this morning, it looks like. Seen a couple fours kicking off here. Uh, some of that into the trench region there of the Colombian Trench of 4.3, 145 kilometers deep down there into the uh, subduction zone. So slight uptick across the area around Panama. Also off the coast of Nicaragua or Costa Rica, one of the two. 4.8, 53 kilometers deep for that earthquake. All right, see if we got anything else going up here in California because we did see some movement kicking up there yesterday. Of course, we had that uh, four-pointer uh, coming into the area of the San Andreas Fault. Let me bring up the last seven days of 2.5 and above. Shows that 4.3 from yesterday. A couple different uh, seismograph stations picking this up as a five, uh, five magnitude, but it uh, looks like they've settled with a 4.3 between the average of all the seismograph stations. Did see uh, some further movement following that 4.3. Looks like a 2.8 and a 2.6 and some other smaller quake activity throughout the day today here specifically within that area of the San Andreas Fault near Parkfield. Uh, so continue to watch that along the plate boundary. A little bit of movement off the coast here of the Santa Barbara area, 2.1 well off the coast into the Pacific, 5.9 kilometers deep. And did see some slight activity here across the Rancho Cucamonga area outside of the, uh, just off the San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment. Uh, seen some activity yesterday and today. It looks like a 2.5 in that area. So activity still remains somewhat above uh, background levels out here for California. No major swarms going on. I'm not really seeing any, any uh, significant swarming. A little bit of activity off the Imperial Fault and the Brawley Seismic Zone, uh, along with the, um, the series of San Jacinto Fault Zone. That extends kind of down here. There's a couple different names for it as it goes south of the border, but it looks like uh, a little bit of activity kicking up there today. Uh, Northern California got a little line of activity here. Now, this is pretty obvious of the subduction zone that sits offshore, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, applying some strain here in a nice little leveled out uh, even fashion but uh, those have to do with the depth below the depth below uh, the system or be, uh, below the uh, land <laughs> into the subduction zone notice these uh, differences here 17 kilometers all the way down to 22 kilometers there uh, with some of these earthquakes that were kicking off yesterday and this morning so uh, I believe trimmer map let me check out the trimmer here tonight or yesterday and see what we had zero zero epicenters i didn't get a chance to do a, a nightly update last night goodness got caught up in a whole bunch of stuff but uh yeah no trimmer at all uh so not for sure what's going on but uh we're definitely seeing some strain building up here just south of eureka but it, again into the southern segment of the cascadia subduction zone oregon and washington very minor movement at best up there little bit of activity across the Utah region there in the mountains and Yellowstone National Park getting a little activity here away from the Yellowstone region well west of uh, West Yellowstone let's go ahead and double check that and see what we have for the latest seismograph stations here not a whole lot going on locally again at the park um, here's the Maple Creek area showing some very small uh, microquakes there across the area but nothing Nothing big going on, not even anything moderate or, or moderately minor. It's all quiet for the most part up there. Washington or the uh, Texas and Oklahoma area, some spotty quakes as well. Looking at the Alaska area, a um, little bit of swarming going on here across the Mount Martin area, I believe this is, right around here. It's been an ongoing swarm here across the Trident Volcano area and areas uh, around the Mount, Mount Martin area lately. Just been just a little earthquake swarming going on. I don't think we've seen any major elevated volcanic unrest there, but uh, continuing to watch that. 
activity north of Anchorage around Denali as well and a slight swarm of activity here across the Japan region but uh, again this was some of this is from yesterday we did see a 5.8 since then we've seen another 4.5 within that same area and also a 4.9 along the Japan trench a little bit deeper at 58 kilometers deep so things are starting to pick up and advance there across the western Pacific the Kuril Kamachaka trench though up here uh, off the coast of Russia that extends into the Aleutian Trench here is still very quiet. Movement across the Indonesia Islands area today cluttered like always. Not seeing any major movement. Uh, looks like the uh, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and the Vanuatu area down here has gone absolutely quiet once again. Uh, New Zealand of course had some activity ramping up there yesterday with a five-pointer. A little bit of bouncing around on magnitudes there from the USGS and the GeoNet server. So uh, let me go back over here to the uh, GeoNet site. And we'll take a look here at the latest information um, from the folks down there in New Zealand. There's that 5.6. They're reporting it as a 5.6 compared to the USGS a 5.1. Uh, that's the last recorded earthquake far as the felt quakes go. Now, I'm sure there's some aftershock activity, or at least minor uh, aftershock activity there in the region. Uh, mostly twos and some ones. There's a 3.6 two hours ago, but that's well north into the Kermanek Trench. Uh, quick glance here at the earthquake drums. We'll see that, uh, that five-pointer there very nicely across all of the seismograph stations there around North Island and South Island, New Zealand. The five-pointer will definitely do that. And uh, let's see, far as afterwards, doesn't look like we're seeing too much activity. It looks like maybe one quake down here on the southern tip of the South Island near the, uh, was it Weather Hill Road area of South Island. One little earthquake, nothing big. Looks like maybe that's in the two range or so. But aside from that, uh, New Zealand still just kind of watching things out there. We did see some further deep movement, a 4.4 into the Tonga Trench, 543 kilometers deep. So continue deep activity. We'll, we'll watch this region for the quiet zone here with this deeper movement. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, I know they got some, some uh, fires going out there around Maui. Goodness, not good. Um, but earthquake activity around the Big Island, a little bit of movement here across the Kilauea Volcano, 2.5, and a couple other smaller quakes here in the last 24 hours. I don't think we've seen anything uh, major going on there. Let's double check the hazard notification system here uh, from the USGS. Stand by for a second while that keys up waiting it says it's waiting okay well let me double check let's do a different uh i got so many windows open i know that's not good uh let's check out this window here leaving all these ports open not good right um hvo kilauea daily update this was from a couple days ago no um update from today's activity with with his which is pretty much just small earthquake activity occurring down below the Kilauea Volcano Crater area. This could have something to do with subsidence or who knows what. Let's check out the uh, tilt meters out there across the region of the um, Kilauea Volcano. Let's see what we have going on. We haven't checked the tilt meters here recently. And, you know, it's some of these are not working. Some of them are, and it's just... It's a shame that the majority of these uh, are not working at all. Uh, like this one over here, the UWT station's offline. Um, SDH looks like it is online. That's here at the southern edge of the crater. This is the last, well, it looks like the last, almost the last month of tilt meter recordings. Um, still seeing, you know, it's been it's been paused since about mid June, far as the eruption goes there at Kilauea volcano. So inflation still looks like it's continuing at a modest level, not anything drastic, but I think things, you know, may still be very active below the surface. There may be potentially recharging, uh, at least on that station. A couple other stations here, uh, just not active. I, you know, not active. This one's a little act. Uh, well, 
This one's a ways away from the Kilauea volcano though, so this one's gonna show a little bit less inflation, but still a gradual trend of uplift. There's some of the earthquake activity. Seismograph stations here, if they're working, some of these aren't. I, majority probably aren't. Here's the last 12 hours earthquake activity around the Kilauea volcano. Know some small, very small earthquakes here across the area. And uh, I would say there's definitely a little bit more earthquake activity uh, than what the USGS is showing here across the map, right, for this area. But continue to watch that. Uh, areas, uh, let's see, what else? South America region here did see some activity in the Argentina region. This earthquake this morning, 200 kilometers deep. Now that area, of course, I'm sure has more than that. Quite a few twos and threes out here, again, across the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, with uptick, obviously, today across the areas around uh, the Columbia area. And still keep an eye on the Middle America Trench, folks. I think that's uh, definitely noteworthy to watch. Uh, what have we got in the eastern portion of the country up here? One earthquake being reported. 2.5. That was from uh, Canada on the border side up here. Or, uh, yeah, well, north of the border. 2.5. Not for sure how you pronounce that. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Earthquakes Canada here real quick. I know it's been a little while since I've checked out uh, the Canada folks up there. And we forget to do it. And it's pretty important to check activity up there as well because, well, a lot of times USGS does not report the movement here that could be uh, going on across the Canada area. There's that current earthquake there, uh, 3.0, being reported from the Earthquakes Canada. And over here across the northern edge of the Cascadia subduction zone. This shows you uh, activity since, well, month or older, week or day. Looks like a uh, majority of this activity is uh, at least a month. Very small movement here up across the, uh, just to the west of the Cascadia subduction zone there on the Explorer plate. This is kind of a, a little separate, yeah, I can't really say separate, right? Because a lot of people just like to call that the, the Juan de Fuca plate, but you got the, uh, the Gorda, Juan de Fuca and the Explorer played up here, the smaller of the uh, three. All right, uh, what else we got? Uh, anything else going on across the Mediterranean? Let's see here. Earthquake activity from yesterday. Uh, mainly twos and threes out there today. Azores area out in the Atlantic showing some movement, including a 3.9. Now, this is getting up there a little bit with the uh, magnitudes. Uh, so continue to watch that. That's been quite active here recently out in the uh, Azores area. All right, space weather activity. See what we got going on here across the area of the sun. Well, no major flares here in the last couple days, it looks like. Very minimal sea flare activity. A look at the UV filter ray. Uh, looks like we're toning down slightly. There was only one regional sunspot I had my eye on. That was 3395. Um, a look at it today still shows a little bit of complex structure within here, but it uh, looks like it may want to hold off until it gets out of view again. I, I wouldn't doubt it. We see this thing pop off a large flare well, once it's way out in the western limb of the sun. Got, got a little bit uh, further growth amongst this sunspot. But that's about it. All other sunspots look fairly stable in terms of their complexity. 99%, uh, where's the flare threat? 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, X flare at 5%. Proton event has disappeared, as you can see. And uh, there's no major solar storms in the uh, forecast here. Look at that. Very quiet conditions out there, unfortunately. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center here. Got a little bit of uh, enhanced severe weather potential here. Across uh, mainly, it looks like Missouri there. Main threat's going to be some large damaging hail in the red area and the dashed reg uh, region. Looks like portions of Kansas included in that as well, but mainly around St. Joseph, Missouri and uh, Maryville, Missouri area. So just a heads up, there is a 2% chance of tornado probability out there with those storms as well. Also up here. Um, in the Michigan area with the 2%. All right, uh, I think that's about it. We're going to talk about some uh, meteor showers peeking out. Um, well, it's supposed to be Saturday night, and tonight as well. Um, I'll go into that a little bit later on our update uh, later on this evening, late afternoon. 
and uh, we'll talk about some meteors. It's been a while since I've been out looking for them. They've been active, you know, for the most part here over the past month. I'm thinking about past month or so, but they peaked tonight uh, as far as that meteor shower potential goes. All right, I'm out of here. Have a good day. Stay safe out there. I've got a busy day, but we will be back later tonight with the update video and talk about some, uh, again, meteor showers. Take care, folks. Enjoy your Friday.